The theme of renewal exists everywhere around us. If you think about it, we have renewal in our lives every day, and the purpose of renewal is to keep us whole. And maybe, in fact, um, you know, it makes us become more one with ourselves and with the earth just by continually renewing. And examples of that are the cycles within cycles that exist within the universe. We have, you know, in the planetary cycles, we have the moon cycle, which is within the earth cycle. And on the earth, we have the vegetation cycle, which is within the seasonal cycle. And, for instance, in our bodies, we have a respiratory cycle of breathing in and breathing out, and that's inside of the sleep cycle, which is very much a renewal cycle. And then when you get to the fertility cycle, which is just for, you know, females, it's very different um, from that of any other cycle because there is um, the creation of new life involved. And it's actually two cycles that are interrelating to one another in a feedback system. And they're the ovulation cycle and the menstrual cycle. And the ovulation cycle, its theme is creation, creation of new life. And the menstrual cycle, its theme is renewal. It's starting all over again. So renewal is really a restart. It's a restart for the female body. And that's a really wonderful thing because it allows us to start again and to become whole again within a cycle. If you, if you can, if you have the time to just, um, you know, spend a little time alone and think about, you know, what it is in the cycle that you want to renew or, you know, work on or make progress with, you can actually um, think of the menstrual cycle as an energetic change going on in your body. And if you're in tune with it, you become more intimate with your body and your sexuality and, you know, even psychologically. And it helps. or let's say the objective of my master's thesis was to find out if we have a positive attitude towards menstruation. Will that make the experience easier or more comfortable? And it turned out that, you know, over the course of a year, my qualitative study with a whole range of women um, showed that it does, all of them, you know, found that the painful experience of menstruation can actually be easier when we approach it with a more positive attitude, um, one in which we see renewal and we see a restart and we see our connection with other natural cycles. I, I had taught um, over 200 women, um, and, you know, and I always ask, each woman to do a survey, you know, what is their prevailing attitude towards menstruation, towards their cycle, what's their favorite phase of their cycle, Um, and what do they think the prevailing cultural attitude is towards menstruation. And, you know, the predominant answer that came up was one of unfortunate, you know, negativity that the culture has um, tried to silence it, tried to make women know, ignore it, pretend it doesn't exist, pretend that, you know, you don't have it when you do have it, um, or, you know, feel that, you know, you, when you have your cycle that you have to be as just as energetic as you are when you're not bleeding. Um, and so there is kind of like a, you know, a, a little bit of a conflict in that. So in other words, um, you know, a lot of women, a lot of women actually liked the pre-ovulation stage. Mm. It's interesting because I think, you know, that the the bleeding has stopped and maybe they see it as, you know, it's easier in that way. That's not my favorite phase. I actually like the premenstrual phase. Really? Oh, yeah. How come? Um, I am highly in tune with my body during that phase. Um, my sexual drive is deeper 
it's actually one can have phenomenal sex mm. during the premenstrual stage and the menstrual stage. It's pretty it's pretty intense at that time, and you know there's a, a whole bunch of things that come up, emotions and moods, and I think the truth comes out at that stage more than any other. And during the actual menstrual bleeding stage, you know, that's really a time when a woman um, should, and I hate to say should, but it would be better um, if she could retreat into herself and relax and not do as much and just slow down a little bit more and be with herself in that way. And I think that is a healthy thing so that you're, you are actually able to physically and mentally and spiritually and psychologically renew yourself. Mm. And it's hard to do that in this society that we live in where we're always driven and everything is fast-paced and productive. It's, you have to produce, you have to produce, you have to produce. And it's interesting how in social media we see all kinds of blood except one kind of blood, and that's menstrual blood. That is invisible. We're not supposed to see that. We're not supposed to remember that it exists. Even though women know it's happening, we're not really supposed to, you know, be different when it's happening. The yeah, fact is that women um, deal with the blood, you know, throughout their lives. And we do that very privately. It's very intimate. And that's not shown in our culture. It's not really honored or given, you know, a respectful place. So um, I try to make positive images because they don't exist in our culture.